Hello, and welcome to Lifestyles by Lola. I am Lola Jamo. We are finally entering that period in between the spring and the summer. So there are so many exciting things to look forward to. I'm gonna share some tips with you to prepare for this season and also help you with all of your events that are gonna be coming up so that you look and feel spring, summer ready. Stay tuned. How many of you suffer from allergies? This is a season that I enjoy, but I run from, and it's because I suffer from allergies. I have some tips to help you at home to really fight it back and not have to worry about all of the nasal congestion, itchy, irritated red eyes, and constant sneezing from all of the beautiful flowers and the change of this season. One, most of the time people don't realize that pollen is everywhere outside. So every time you go out, it's landing on you, it's landing on your clothes, it's on your hair, it's in your skin. So most importantly for everyone that has a lot of hair, make sure that you wash your hair every single night before bed. If you're not doing that, the pollen is staying in your hair, getting on the pillow, and no wonder when you wake up in the morning you feel terrible because it's been following you. It's followed you all the way home to your most sacred place, your bed. So make sure that you're washing your hair every night during this allergy season if you're like me or any of the other allergy sufferers out there. In addition to that, sheets. Again, washing your sheets in hot water at least once a week will also help to prevent against additional dust mites that are in the air while you're cleaning for your spring cleaning season and also just the extra allergens and pollen that live on your clothes and your body when you're going home and going into the house and specifically going to bed. One of the other things you should do is make sure that you clean all your surfaces. During your spring cleaning process, dust mites and other you know, irritants get in the air. You want to make sure that after you dust, you go over everything one last time to make sure that the surface is actually clean. Because sometimes when you're festering everything up, it can resettle and cause those you know, irritants to be in the air and uh, allergies come back again, of course. One of the other things that you want to think about to reduce the pollen in the air is making sure that you're cleaning all your units and vents. This is all of your air conditioning vents and everything like that. You also want to, if you're using your humidifier or dehumidifier, make sure you're cleaning those vents as well during this season because there's just a lot more in the air as everything is blooming and growing and preparing us for summer. The other thing that we don't think about is rugs. Rugs, especially area rugs, can hold a lot of dust and dust mites and pollen and other allergen, allergic things. And by washing those as often as we can in hot water, again, is going to help tremendously from spreading that in the air of your home and also when you're carrying in those allergy items like pollen onto your doorstep and into your home. One of the most important things you can do to help with that is making sure you also are vacuuming once a week. So every night washing your hair and of course your body, making sure that you're vacuuming once a week and also making sure that you're washing your sheets once a week as well will help tremendously in getting rid of those additional things that kickstart your allergies and make you feel terrible. Wiping off your surfaces and just making sure that you kind of go over everything one more time during this season will help you so much to not have to deal with all of the drama that comes along with this allergy season. So try these tips and I'm sure they will work for you. 
probably got a garden party coming up or some kind of a summer event, whether it's Memorial Day or any of the other festivities that we throw during this warm season. Are you on a budget? <laughs> then I've got some great tips for you. One thing that I have to say first is that I don't know about you, but when I cook food, the flies just come from everywhere. So one of the things that I recommend for all of you out there that are preparing your dishes that are so yummy and you know the bugs are going to want to get to them is getting one of these baskets that actually comes with a kind of, I guess, like a um, sheer breathable uh, mesh over it. They sell them in little tent forms where they kind of open up like an umbrella. I like this style because it's a basket and the mesh is connected with it. And there's a clasp that you can use to just uh, button off the side. And that really prevents a lot of the bugs to come and eat your food before your family does. Um, so I really love those. And you can find these at uh, any of your favorite, um, you know, home and uh, decor stores. They uh, sometimes have them at your local discount stores as well. And you can get them, like I said, in the tent version or this, which is like a basket. Uh, so it actually holds the food as well. And it's kind of all encompassing. So you can carry it from one place to another, which is really nice. However, you want to decorate. You want to add that, you know, va va voom to your party and it's the last minute. Why not use things that you already have in your home? Mason jars. I love mason jars. I love drinking out of them because there's so much drink space. When I was little, I was always um, given the smallest glass in the house to drink juice. And uh, now, as an adult, I can drink as much juice as I want in my mason jar. Um, but aside from mason jars being great to drink out of, they just kind of add that summer element, I think. And they're really rustic and they're durable. So you can use them as a multi-purpose item during the summer season. I think it's kind of festive almost because I feel like mason jars have that summer element. I always picture sweet tea in them or lemonade. But if you're on a budget and you want to make a cute, really cool kind of uh, motif for your tables, all you need is some candles you've got lying around. Maybe you've got some red candles left over from Valentine's Day or Christmas. You know, maybe you've got some plain white candles. Something like a mason jar is a great votive for a small candle like this or even a larger candle. Salt. Everyone has salt. Most of us have more than enough than we even need. And it's so cheap and it's always lying around. I use salt and also sugar if you've got white sugar, which it's hard to come by here because I don't really buy white sugar very much. But if you've got salt or sugar or even, you know, decorative sand, they make a great base inside your mason jar. So what we're going to do first is create our, you know, base. And like I said, you can do this with sand. You can also do this with sugar, you know, but if you're on a budget and, you know, you need to figure out some cool ideas to decorate for your party last minute, this will always save the day. So we got our salt in there, which gives us that white color, which is nice because we've got you know, Memorial Day, 4th of July, all of the summer is red, white, and blue. We're patriotic, right? This is when we celebrate our great nation, the USA. So we've got our white and we've got our leftover Christmas Valentine's Day candle. We stick it in there and you can kind of push it down a little so that it gets in there. And ta-da! You've got your cool summer you know, looking votive. You light it. You don't have to worry about the fire being an issue because the mason jar is so large, the fire is going to burn a lot lower. Um, these type of candles usually burn down into themselves. 
salt doesn't burn <laughs> so you don't have to worry about it catching fire and it's really festive for your Memorial Day your 4th of July last minute I don't know you know what to do and I need to decorate and this is just a cool cute little motif for the center of your table easy right moving on I always like to use cloth napkins to decorate um, my table for meals even if people don't use them because a lot of times people are like oh I'll just use the paper ones I don't want you to have to wash them but I think that's part of the fun is having a nice meal and sitting down with friends and family and using you know beautiful napkins cloth napkins however I do like to set them up on the table on top of the plate or aside the table and sometimes I don't necessarily have you know matching rings you know for my napkins I don't have napkin rings for every single holiday um, if you're in a pinch another great way to decorate your napkins for your tables is leftover ribbon I save everything okay I'm not a pack rat but I do save everything I've got ribbons from gifts I've got ribbons from, you know, extra ribbon that was left over from presents that I've wrapped for people. When you're doing kind of a home-based fun party, nothing has to be perfect, but if it's, you know, decorated in a unique way, I think people appreciate that. Now, if you want all of your ribbon to match, you can go to your favorite discount store and get ribbon any color, any kind for a dollar and cut it to size however you like it and decorate your napkins. Or if you're like me and you save your ribbons, you'll have extra little scraps left over like these. So what you wanna do, depending on what you like, if you wanna do a fatter ribbon like these or something small like this, I'm gonna go with this one because it's polka dot. I like the preppy theme. You're gonna take your napkin and you know, what you can do, you can fold it into three. This one has the monogram on it. I love the monogram napkins. And once you've done that, you can fold it in half like you normally would. And depending on whether you, uh, you have a monogram or if you even, for me, like today, I'm going to cover that and make it more narrow. You've got it into size. Then you take your ribbon and basically... Uh, even if you wanted another style I like actually which I think will be even funner is I roll it so it's into a nice little roll and then I take the ribbon and I tie it around and don't be afraid to squeeze it a little I think it looks nice when it has a little bit of a tautness to it and if you'd like you can make a little bow you know and there you go or if you don't want to do a bow and you just want to do the actual ribbon you can do something like this where it's just kind of hanging over and then also for the edges luckily these came off of a gift so my edges are already cut but if your edges aren't already cut you always want to make sure that you cut your edges on an angle if you're not good at kind of doing something funky or fun. The other thing that you can do is if you want your edges to have more of a style, like a point, you can pinch the end of the ribbon, take your scissors, and cut straight across the pinch. And then you get a cute little, you know, pointed edge, which is also a really nice style. Or you can go on a slant and have a slanted edge, which is more common. But I love doing these types of things because they take up no time at all. They're very unique and different. And if you've got ribbons lying around, every napkin can have a different ribbon on it. And it's really fun and festive and it costs nothing because it's already here. You've already got the salt. You've already got the old candles. You've got the mason jar. Take these things that are already in your home 
and use them to decorate for your spring parties and events that are coming up this summer instead of having to go out and buy stuff if it's necessarily not in your budget. So try it and I'm sure your party will be a success. Spring and summer beverages. What can we do for this season? Well, everyone loves iced tea and everyone loves lemonade, so why not mix them? Some of your favorite restaurants have already done it. I'm sure you've tried it. The new popular thing is lemon iced tea, and it comes in so many different variations. Everyone loves really, you know, tart lemonade during this season. And everyone loves iced tea, so it makes sense to marry the two together, right? I've got here brewing uh, some basic tea that I made, um, chamomile, and it's been steeping for about 10 minutes. I've got some spring water, my pressed lemon juice that I love, and some sugar, uh, raw sugar, which I prefer because I feel that it's healthier, and my lovely little European glass bottle with the... Uh, corked top which keeps it locked in and fresh. What you want to make sure you do first is when you're brewing your tea and you can do this with green tea, um, any of your favorite black teas and I'm using chamomile tea which is you know kind of calming but has a really crisp taste to it as well. You want to make sure that you add the sugar in to the tea as it's steeping with the tea bag for that 10 minutes. That's going to help to liquefy the sugar, especially, you know, the actual, you know, raw sugar, which can kind of be very thick and uh, granulated. So you allow that to steep until all of the sugar, you know, softens as much as it can. And then in the midst of that, what you want to do is add your pressed lemon. So we start off with, I would say, about one-fourth pressed lemon juice. You can also use concentrated lemon juice as well. And once you've got that, pour that into your lovely bottle. And you want to make sure that your bottle is room temperature, or if you've just washed it, that you use hot water. You want to maintain the warmth of the bottle so that once you add the tea, the glass doesn't crack. And most importantly, you want to make sure that when you add the tea, that it's cooled off enough that it's still hot so that it mixes well with the lemon and the water, but not so hot again that it's going to crash, crack your glass bottle. So now that we've added the one-fourth, that's going to give the nice tart lemon taste that we want. You want to add your water. And again, based off of the size of the bottle, you want to make sure that, you know, you add enough water that you basically see that lemon juice thinning out a bit, you know, because concentrated lemon juice or pressed lemon juice is pretty potent. So you want to add that tart flavor, but not so strong. And now we've left enough to add our tea at the end. So as I said before, we added, you know, and I always like to add it to the actual area where the strainer is. So it gets collected in that strained part, but is still, you know, continually basically sweetening the tea as well. Now that it's done that, I can pour out that excess sugar from the actual strained into the rest of the tea kettle. And uh, it will get, you know, kind of, especially if you're using this kind of sugar, it'll definitely get kind of stuck in there and clumpy because it's still dissolving, but eventually it'll all dissolve. You know, and if I had made the tea even hotter, probably would have liquefied by now. So put that back in there. And then because this has a spout, it's so easy 
all we need to do is just pour our tea in. And no cracking because my bottle is not freezing cold. It's still maintained room temperature. And cork it. And you've got some yummy, great lemon iced tea. This one is going to be my favorite because I love chamomile tea. It's so soothing to drink during the hot season before you go to bed. But try experimenting and doing it with green teas or black teas and see how you like it for you. All you need is a little bit of hot tea, some concentrated lemon juice or pressed lemons, water and sugar. That easy and your favorite drink is now here for you to enjoy with your friends and family. hope that you enjoyed our show. Please definitely visit us on our website, which is www.lifestylesbylola.com to keep up with all of my tips and additional information about the show and to contact us as well. And most importantly, enjoy this season. Spend time with friends and family and get out and enjoy this weather. And as always... Live life.